This is FYI News 13, brought to you by SSPTV and the Hazelton Standard Speaker. For your information, we discuss your role in fire prevention and how to help local emergency responders during the winter. Good evening and thanks for joining us at FYI. I'm Ken Carr. We start with our headlines from FYI News 13 and the Hazelton Standard Speaker. A major employer in our area is closing. According to our media partner, the Standard Speaker, the Office Depot Distribution Center in the Humboldt Industrial Park, formerly Office Max, will close its 600,000 square foot building in East Union Township. The decision will mean the loss of 190 full-time employees and 50 temporary jobs. CANDU President Kevin O'Donnell says CANDU is disappointed, but he also says that it had nothing to do with performance at the local facility. He says it was one of the many consolidations made since the merger with Office Max in 2013. Our next two stories are about helping you keep you and your family safe this winter. First up is my interview with a local firefighter. Here with a very special guest, Brian Cara, Deputy Fire Chief in the Borough of West Hazelton. I'd like you to go online, Facebook, vote for your favorite Cara on FYI. We have Brian, myself, Gino Cara, coach of the Hazelton Area Baseball Team every now and then as well. Brian, we're actually here today to talk about something very serious. It's called Adopt a Fire Hydrant, but there's really nothing official about it. Anyone can do it. Why is this so important in the winter? It's basically just shoveling out the fire hydrant near your house. That's that's truly how it is, Kenny. Um, it's you're not adopting it it's not costing you anything what it is is if there's a fire hydrant the closest fire hydrant to your house whether it be on your property or not when you're outside shoveling you have to go outside and shovel anyway most municipalities require your sidewalks to be cleared within 12 or 24 hours or whatever take an extra three four ten minutes even to shovel out the hydrant closest to your house a lot of people don't think about that but that hydrant is a supply of water if there's a fire at your house or your neighbor's house so simply by saying adopting that hydrant means pay it some attention. When you get a snowstorm, shovel your sidewalk and then go shovel out that fire hydrant. It's very important. It might take you five minutes to do, which is no really big deal. But if we have to do it when we respond to an emergency, five minutes is a big deal when a house is burning. Yeah, can you give us a little bit of a time frame? What is five, six minutes like for a fire fire? You said fire can move pretty fast. Yeah, years ago with the materials, a lot of things were made out of solid wood and um, not a lot of chemical composition and so on and so forth. But as time has gone by now, um, fire can grow exponentially. In five or six minutes, you could have one room burning, and within five or six minutes, depending on the fire load in the house, that could travel three, four, five rooms or even through the roof. Adopting a fire hydrant, that five or six minutes, can mean the difference between a room burning and a house burning down. And there are some other responsibilities in the winter, and I guess all year really, and you said fire prevention is a community effort, something maybe people don't think about. You think, nah, let the firefighters handle that. Right, you know, look, at, we're all in this together. It's a community. It's called a community because we all have to roll up our sleeves and see what we can do to make it the best community we can for everybody. If you don't want to be a firefighter, I'm not asking you to come put on gear and put on an air pack and run into a burning house, but there are things you can do to support your fire company, like adopting a fire hydrant. That five or six minutes makes a big difference. You could save somebody's house or somebody's life by taking that five or six minutes and taking care of that. You don't have to be a firefighter to make a difference. Give us a hand. You said maybe shovel around the house, maybe the second entrance into your house, not just the front walkway. Absolutely, Kenny. It's really important to understand that um, new fire tactics and procedures require the incident commander to walk a 360 around that house to look for means of egress uh, for victims or his firefighters that are inside and also to look for further extension of the building that's burning and buildings that are next to it. So the incident commander has to walk around that residence and if it's not shoveled out, he may not be able to do that. Uh, also, you know what a lot of people don't keep in mind, this isn't specific only for the fire departments, but you have to keep in mind your emergency medical personnel also and law enforcement. Basically, all emergency responders, they need to get to you if you need help. You call 911, we come. You call 911 for an ambulance, we come. You call 911 for a police officer, we come. But we got to get to you. So you have to remember, yeah, okay, I shovel my sidewalk, but did I shovel a path out to the street? Did I shovel my steps? Did I shovel my porch? Uh, how is a police officer or a paramedic or an EMT going to get to me? Um, we can get to you and give you the help. But again, I'm not asking you to go be a paramedic or an EMT. I'm not asking you to go be a law enforcement officer. I'm asking, help out, help us get to you. And there's two things I learned in my life. It's you never know when an emergency is going to happen. And number two, you should always listen when a Kara is speaking. Brian, thank you so much for joining us today and some great advice. Thank you. 
Chief Kara adds that if you shovel out a fire hydrant, it will help make sure that it's not frozen when firefighters arrive on scene. Now to some shoveling tips, and honestly, I only follow tip number one from chiropractor Dr. Joseph Bafil. I need to change that. Tip one is to dress properly so that your body and muscles are warm. Here's a few other tips. So when we're shoveling, we want to push forward and then kind of heave it forward away from us, almost like a snow plow, okay? And then that third one, as I said, any twisting or turning is going to be advantageous, causing stress or strain to the body. So when we have that, that shovel full of that snow, that wet, heavy stuff, we don't want to twist and throw it because that's when you're going to need to call me and we'll help you out. Some other tips include doing some stretches before you shovel and to make sure you aren't filling the shovel up all the way with snow. You can see more of Dr. Bafil on Feeling Good right here on SSP TV. Speaking of the cold, Eagle Rock Resort will host the annual Winter Olympics tomorrow and it's sure to be a complete success thanks to the support of a wonderful community. This is video from last year's event which features special needs students from the Hazleton Area School District. To make sure all the students are properly dressed for tomorrow's outdoor activities, employees at Old Navy in the Laurel Mall wanted to help. They decided to chip in to help purchase some needed clothing for the students like snow pants and snow boots. Then, following their lead, some compassionate community members did the same. FYI will be at the Special Olympics at Eagle Rock Resort, and we will have coverage on FYI and on an upcoming episode of Out of Left Field. A reminder that if there is a two-hour school delay tomorrow for the Hazleton Area School District, the Winter Olympics will be postponed until the following Friday, February 6th. Check our Facebook page for updates. Coming out of isolation and reconnecting to the community can be a difficult task for people with disabilities. This morning, members of a nonprofit program called A Better Life Experience, known as ABLE, had students experience what it's like to have different disabilities. One way they did this was by diminishing the use of their hands while trying to open locks and hold items. This was one of the events for Catholic Schools Week that continued at Holy Family Academy in Hazleton this week. Cancer was another subject discussed with the students. The American Cancer Society talked about the dangers of smoking and skin cancer. Community Services for Sight described what it's like to have a visual impairment, showing students braille and talking to them about how you can still be independent with the disability. Sprinkles of love are going to be spread all over downtown Hazleton, and some big names are helping spread the love. Believe it or not, I didn't write that lead. Hazleton Mayor Joe Yanuzzi has decided to play Cupid as part of the Downtown Hazleton Alliance for Progress's second Friday event in February. The mayor has offered to perform wedding ceremonies for anyone who would like to get married or renew their vows on Valentine's Eve. Here's Krista Schneider with more details. Um, anybody who wants to get married or renew their vows in honor of Valentine's Day this year, uh, needs to book their, um, their, their book it on the schedule with City Hall by February 9th. And then we also have a live broadcast from WAZL um, at Frankie's Restaurant from 4 to 6. And so if anybody wants to go live on the radio and proclaim their love for somebody, they can do it that night. <laughs> The lobby of the Hayden Tower at the Markle Building will serve as a backdrop for the ceremonies. Other events and business promotions will be held throughout downtown Hazleton. For a complete list of events, go to the website up on your screen. We now want to tell you to pick up this standard speaker whenever you get the opportunity or go to standardspeaker.com. They're our media partner and they will have you covered. For all of your local news, sports and more, for breaking news, sign up for text alerts. Up next on FYI, it's our weekly Downtown Hazleton Alliance for Progress segment, the weather forecast, and we'll take you to the press conference where Pennsylvania Supreme Court Justice Coriel Stevens announced he will run for the scene he currently occupies by appointment. In sports, we'll let you know how the bowling season is going for the Hazleton area Cougars, and two members of the team will tell us about an interesting fundraiser for the team. This is FYI News 13, brought to you by SSP-TV and the Hazleton Standard Speaker. Thanks for joining us here each and every Thursday on FYI. We focus on downtown businesses of Greater Hazleton. And Lehigh Tire has been a staple in this community for many years. Jim Barron is the owner. So thanks for joining us here on FYI. Thanks for having me. All right, so tell us about your business. Well, we've been downtown for this year. It'll be 55 years. 
55 years. Yes. Uh, tires, automotive service, state inspections, the whole nine yards. What have you seen over the years? Cars have changed a lot. People have changed. People's uh, needs have changed. Uh, we just keep, you know, batting away every day. What do you say to people who haven't been downtown in a while? Come see the new Broad Street. It's fantastic. It is. It's amazing, uh, the progress that we have made over the last several years. Um, as far as the, uh, you know, getting people to the downtown area and showing support for local businesses, what do you have to say for that? Well, I think that's important that we try to keep our local economy growing mm -hmm. by keeping the money here. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's, what, that's what we strive to do, you know, in our relationships with other businesses and I think it's important. I'll ask you the same question I ask everyone on this segment, and that is, do you feel safe in the downtown? I don't think about it. Uh, the more you think about it, uh, you know, mm -hmm. I, I try not to think about it. Uh, I know we're, I th I'm, I'm confident that the city is making improvements mm -hmm. to make downtown safer. Okay. Well, thanks for joining us again, Jim Barron from Lehigh Tire in downtown Hazleton. Each and every Thursday, we talk to business owners about their businesses, shopping local, supporting this great community. Time now for FYI News 13 weather. I just received urgent breaking news. Discovery Channel has announced Shark Week will be moved up to the first week of July, July 5th. So check that out and think summer because that will be a happy time because it's cold outside and it's going to stay that way. Here's our forecast from the National Weather Service. Tonight, snow mainly before 4 a.m. Our low will be 23 degrees and we will get around two inches of snow. On the extended forecast Friday, there's a chance of snow showers mainly before 5 p.m. The high will fall to 17 degrees by 5 p.m. The wind chill will be around zero, and it is possible for less than a half inch of snow to accumulate. Friday night, there's a slight chance of snow showers, mostly cloudy. Our low will be around four. It will feel like negative 15 and very windy out. It will stay windy on Saturday with a high near 15. Saturday night, partly cloudy with a low around six. Sunday, we get up to 22 degrees and mostly cloudy skies. Sunday night, a chance of snow, low of 12. Monday, another chance of snow with a high near 19. And Monday night, partly cloudy with a low around negative 6. Bundle up, everyone. Tonight's weather is brought to you by the Pines Eatery and Spirits in downtown Hazleton. I love their special today. Pepper, eggs, and cheese with french fries. My grandfather makes this dish every now and then. And it's great because I can enjoy it with the beer at the Pines. Check out the Pines full menu on their website and like them on Facebook. It's the first time since the state constitution was amended in 1968 that a sitting Pennsylvania Supreme Court justice has to run for re-election instead of a yes or no vote from the electorate. But that's exactly what Pennsylvania Supreme Court Justice Coriel Stevens will do. Surrounded by students, he advises from the mock trial teams of Hazleton Area High School and MMI Pre Preparatory School, Judge Stevens made his official announcement. The rule of law is under attack and we need to have judges that are experienced in criminal law and civil law. Now, whether it be a uh, death penalty, or whether it just simply be uh, uh, a crime of property violence, not, not violent crime, we need experienced judges. And that's why it, uh, I'm running for the Supreme Court and also no one else is from this part of the state. And, and this part of the state should not be ignored in statewide government. Um, so therefore, that's another reason that I'm running. My experience is handling crim hundreds of criminal cases and civil cases. And the Supreme Court is not a place for on-the-job training. This has been a difficult year for the Supreme Court. And the fir I'm the first Supreme Court justice to run in a direct election. That's not a yes-no vote. A yes-no vote's a lot easier. I have to compete in an election. And I'm not going to inject politics into the Supreme Court, nor will I let the Supreme Court get injected into politics. Throughout his political career, Stevens never lost an election. He previously served as state representative, Luzerne County District Attorney, on the Luzerne County Court of Common Pleas and the State Superior Court. Stevens responded to concerns that he is currently 68 years old, just two years shy of the mandate retirement age of 70. I would not be running if I thought I could only serve one year. Um, on February 3rd, the House Judiciary Committee 
uh, is going to take up the bill to extend judges to uh, the age of judges to 75. Senator uh, Jake Corman, the majority leader of the Senate, called me on Saturday and he said, I understand people are bringing this up against you. I want you to know that the Senate is going to get it on the ballot. Um, they said they might not make it in time for the May primary. And then the other part of it is then the voters have to approve it. And the largest voting block in Pennsylvania um, are older voters. And everybody from the polls, the Zogby and all the polls have said that they don't expect any opposition to it. So um, all I could do is go on, on that faith at this point. Um, but I believe that and that's why you know, I'm willing to campaign. Stevens was appointed to his current seat on the court and was unanimously confirmed by the state Senate. He said he will not accept political party endorsements. And before we go to break on FYI, here's your midday winning Pennsylvania lottery numbers on the green screen. Pick 2, 9, 2, pick 3, 0, 1, 2, pick 4, 6, 1, 9, 8, and pick 5, 1, 1, 2, 6, 1. Sports is next on FYI. This is FYI News 13 Sports. I'm going to tell you all about an opportunity that you have to bowl with these two very talented bowlers standing right next to me. We'll get into that, but first, let's talk about the program they're involved with, the Hazleton Area High School bowling teams, the girls and the boys. Jamie Kalaga is with us. She's a senior. And Zach Bergenson, Bergenson, he is with the boys. He is a junior. Jamie, let's start with you. You were bowling since you can't even. That was your response. You've been bowling a while. Your coach did the math. It's been about 13 years, a longtime bowler, very successful. Last year, the girls make a run to the state tournament first time in school history what was that run like how much does the competition change as you go through the regional and then to state I mean if you had to compare I mean what is it like even compared to the regular season is it a lot tougher or? yeah our competition is definitely a lot different you know like making spares you've got to make spares strikes oh yeah like you know what I mean scores are definitely a lot higher more pressure but it's fun it's definitely fun so the girls this season, talk about the group this year. What are you guys looking to accomplish? Is State still the ultimate goal? Is it realistic? Yeah, we're right. doing well. Like, just we only lost one member from last year. We have a good chance. All the girls definitely got a lot better. No one really stopped bowling. So it just, it's going to be good. How do you get better? You've been bowling for 13 years. What do you do to get better? Um, consistently hitting marks, different sport patterns, just tournaments, going to them whenever you could, and just bowling, having fun. So, Jamie, thank you. We'll be back with you. Zach, on the guy side, you guys like it to be the first time the boys team goes to States this year. What have you guys been working on? What's something you're really working on to get there? We definitely need to work on being a team. We haven't really gotten each other psyched up and gotten pumped over making spares and strikes, and we really need to work on that. Otherwise, we're very consistent when we're out there bowling. How important of an element is that, being a team and getting pumped up when you're at the lane and, and going, why is that so important? Well, last year we weren't really a team, to be honest, so we could have made it to states like the girls did, but we kind of let that fall apart, not being a team. But two years ago, before I was on the team, I heard that the, all the varsity players on the boys' team always pumped each other up, were always psyched up together, and they almost made it, but they fell just short. And we're going to show B-roll of everyone bowling here, the Hazleton area Cougars. They're good. They're very talented. And coming up on February 22nd, that's a Sunday here at the Bowl Arena, there's different times. You could come at 11 a.m., 2 p.m., and you can get a chance to bowl with some of the Cougars. This is a fundraiser for the team. Tell us a bit about Zach, because we need some insight if I do come here and I pick Zach. What should, what should my strategy be against him? Um, don't make him laugh, because that's a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> and does just, that help him or hinder him while he's bowling? Um, it could be a little bit of both. <laughs> and what is he like as a bowler? Um, very consistent and just like he's the kind of guy anyone's down the team could always perk them up to get him back in the game. So he, you're the guy who might be providing that spark when he's talking about team yeah. for the guys. It could be him. Zach, and tell us about Jamie a little bit. If I'm coming in against her, what should my strategy be? You definitely want to make her laugh because that'll screw her up pretty good. But um, what you really want to do is pick up your spares because sometimes she'll chop some pins and mess up, mess up pretty well. Wow. <laughs> Why is it important, you think, for people to come out? And maybe this is a good way for people to get to know you guys and more recognition for the bowling team. Oh, yes, definitely we need a lot of recognition. We don't have much support, and we're looking for people to help support us and help us on our way towards our goal of states. 
and this would be a great way to get to know the bowlers and their personalities as well. So come out for that, and we will keep you updated on the Cougars, the Cougars and Lady Cougars quest for a state championship. So you'll get a Cougar on your team, and then you'll be competing against other Cougars on the other team's interesting event. So here's tonight's FYI Standard Speakers scoreboard. The District 2 Wrestling Tournament is this weekend, and the Big HA will go in with some momentum after their win over Crestwood. They finish Wyoming Valley Conference competition with a 6-1 record and tied for first in Division 1. The District 11 meet is also this weekend, and on Wednesday, North Schuylkill, Tamaqua, and Monoy area both had losses in the Schuylkill League. I believe most cats don't like water, but these Cougars do, and they got a sweep over Berwick in the pool. In girls basketball, North Schuylkill beat Mount Carmel in a non-league matchup, and MMI in boys basketball, they lost to GAR in the Wyoming Valley Conference. Thursday is $1 burger night at Bottlenecks. Get a juicy fourth pound burger for only $1 all night long. Good evening everyone and here's tonight's Talk of the Town report. Two announcements. First, the Valley Regional Girls Softball League is now accepting registration forms for the 2015 season. Girls between the ages of 5 and 18 are eligible to play. Registration is 50 for one player and 40 for the second girl from the same family. For information, check out valleyregionalsoftball.com or call 570-401-1144. And finally, Holy Trinity Orthodox Church located at South Kennedy Drive in McAdoo will be holding a pierogi and halushki sale Friday, February 6th from 10 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. Call ahead orders are greatly appreciated by calling 570-929-2179. That's tonight's Talk of the Town. News 13 would like to send sincere condolences to the family and friends of these recently departed. Paul E. Cole, formerly of Weatherly, memorial is Saturday at 11 a.m. from the Philip J. Jeffries Funeral Home. Friends may call Saturday from 10 to 11 a.m. Frank M. Dammitz, formerly of Hazleton. Arrangements will be announced by the Hazel Chapel of the Crofton Hughes Funeral Home. Florence M. Job, the McHugh Wilczek Funeral Home, will announce complete arrangements. Calvin Barry, the McHugh Wilczek Funeral Home, will announce complete arrangements. John D. McCarthy of Kingston, services Saturday at 10 a.m. in the Church of St. Mary of the Immaculate Conception. Friends may call Friday from 3 to 7 p.m. in the church. Robert J. Shellhammer, Jr. of Drums. Funeral is Saturday at 2 p.m. from the Harmon Funeral Home. Friends may call Saturday from noon to 2 p.m. Dorothy May Hunsinger of Hazleton. Memorial will be held privately and at the convenience of the family. And Michael Plaska, Jr. Friends may call Thursday from 6 to 8 p.m. in the McNulty Funeral Home. Attention pay-per-view subscribers, if you see your name right now on News 13, you'll have 13 minutes to call in and win a free movie from Service Electric Cablevision. Our winner tonight is Ed Sheehan of Freeland. Ed, if you're watching, give us a call right now, 570-455-7267, extension 104. Before we leave tonight, just a reminder to go to downtownhazelton.org. Check out all of the events coming up for Second Friday, and you might be able to get married as well. Thank you for joining us tonight. Take it easy, everyone.